in Victoria. Beautiful sunshine to get things underway. It's the penultimate game of round 17 on afl.com.au and the AFL Live official app for Collingwood, their last win against this opponent at this venue. And rather strangely, Peter, they are the home team today on enemy territory as we have a secondary ball up. Pit net back in the Smithies VFL for the Blues as McRae soccers it inside 50 for Collingwood. And the ball is overrun initially by Young. Back in the chaos, a number of players converging on it as we get a little kick around the corner. Backing back was Logan Prout. And the Blues can rebound off the back line. Yeah, they can. Here's Lockie Young. It's across to Lewis in space. Lemmy. Oh, trying to go back inside 50. That's dangerous. It was terrible. It's been cut off by Smith and he kicks the first for the Pies. The big Roo. His first goal in the Smithies VFL. They get to him as well. In game number six here at VFL level. And the Pies after that horrible turnover from the Blues on the board first. We should mention too, Adam, Nikki Christian debuting today for Collingwood's VFL side as the 23rd player. Son of someone who you saw downstairs before, Michael Christian. Yep, the AFL MRO is here today watching his son make his VFL debut. Nicky Christian, 19 years old, out of old Melburnians. And he is in the number 67 for Collingwood. What a start. Our umpires today, Alex Murray, Michael Wilcox, Kyle Van Ray. This is Alex Murray with Collingwood on the board early. And big Mason Cox is playing his first VFL game for a while. Pit net, that's a good ruck battle, that one. Pit net getting the clearance for the Blues. It didn't quite escape the uh, centre square, though. The ball is on ground level. Strong tackle being laid by Cooper Lord. Alex Murray com comes in to call for the ball up. Good contingent of AFL listed players for both sides out there today. Of course, Collingwood going down in the AFL to Hawthorne last night. The Blues in action later on today at the top level. Hayes. Back into this Carlton VFL set up now after a bit of a spell. Bytel was worried out of it, never had it. And it will be a free kick for the former Saint. The man that's played a lot of footy for Sandy as well. Vanish Pate. Yeah, as uh, this ball goes up the line, it'll be tossed in. Last week, 33 disposals for Jack Bytel. Being it done at this level, averaging 24.4 disposals a game. And he's, this is game number 11 for him here in this Collingwood VFL side as the ball's tossed back in. Mentioned Billy Frampton playing his first Smithies VFL game of the season. As Cox trying to clear that ball out but holding the footy from earlier. And the turnover to the Blues. Then he had something happening forward of centre. Luke Nelson's got it. I'm not sure where to go. So he's just going to stick to that out of sides. Here's the 50 gamer, Kale. Talk about 50 specifically for Carlton being a standalone side, just in case you're wondering. The kick here going long, the fist coming in. It's right near the line, and Jack Martin can't keep it in. We will have it tossed in. Right where the 50 intersects the boundary line here at Icon Park. Small crowd. I suspect the Blues fans are going to come in before they head off to the AFL game a little bit later on. One AFL listed Magpies out here, 13 for the Blues. Nelson going around the corner. It's going to just bounce in space here, trying to keep it in front. It was Air doing the defensive work. Another ball up called for. First time Blues have been in scoring range this morning. Now still in the morning here, 11.05 kickoff. Only two games in Smithies VFL today. It is the Rebel VFLW grand final day as well. McRae with the dump kick back out, but only as far as Ramshaw. Two kicks from home here. Carlton toward the legend stands in this first quarter. Ramshaw's kick inside 50. It just gets plucked. Hudson O'Keefe to line up. They got through that pretty nicely, did Hudson O'Keefe. Only kicked a couple of goals for the season. This is game number eight, Smithy's VFL level. and. Nice clunk against Mason Cox. Second season on Carlton's list yet to 
debut. It's a careful approach for the big man, but it is missing. So the ball had come back in. Glover is stuck for options, basically, so he ended up having to run that out. They were trying to put some pressure on him. They couldn't get him in the end. Kennedy now called to play on. There's a lot of hesitancy as Collingwood exit defensive 50. Went through McDonald's. And now the turnover is on. Hadar is brought down the 23rd player for Carlton today. Kick is short. Nelson getting some nice touches early. That's superb. Great kick. Right into the pocket. And Lemmy has it. Chance at his first of the day. And goal number 14 for the season. And he has played the, the 14 games here at Smithy's VFL level. He's going to go around on the curve. Get a good view of this. Now he plays on. Oh, and he hasn't brought it back enough. It's gone all the way to the boundary line. We'll have it tossed in right next to that behind post. It's a beautiful sunny day, but the rain's not too far away at it. I hear oh, it's no, been no. raining for weeks. It has. It's, it's been... Um, yeah, compared to... I feel like last winter was a little drier, a little warmer. We've got winter properly arriving in Victoria at the moment. Wilson with the dump kick back out for Collingwood. Hung in the air a long time. And it was Lewis Young underneath it. Spots up the short 45. And another chance at goal here for the Blues. This time, it's Xavier Ma. Well, after the Pies had all the control in the opening couple of minutes, the Blues are turning this around nicely. On the 45 here. Four goals, four coming into today. In 12 previous Smithies VFL appearances. Getting pretty close to the mark here. Didn't seem confident at the distance. Is it marked on the line? No, it does fall. And it's in danger of being socketed through and head in hands in the end for Ned Cal, perhaps missing an opportunity. So Glover again, unsure where to go. Called to play on. Oh, he's got to be careful. They run off and he'll continue to hug that out of sight. No real breeze to speak of. Here, as Smith got his hands to it, couldn't get it. Prouts. Turnover on, kick inside the 50. Glover coming out to meet it, dispossessed. Kale in there. Ball spilling free. Ma trying to keep it in, and he will. His little chippy kick inside 50. Oh, clean ball, Mason Cox. Falls to the back. Murkov, the big fella, had to get down on hands and knees, and then was in trouble and will have the ball tossed up. So into it. Inside 50 again for the Blues. Trying to clear his McRae. It's right near that boundary line. Lane will have to do the tackling work. Did pretty well in the end. Ball spills free. Bins just shovels a handball out in the end. And the boundary line wins out. And we'll have it tossed in. 191 AFL games between Mason Cox and Mark Pitt and today in Rock. Another boundary throw in. Since that first goal for Collingwood, Carlton have had this game on their terms. They're well up on the possession count. So far today, a little kick toward the wing, Di Matea, but it only goes as far as Ramshaw again for the Blues, picking off another 50. one. And 50, encroachment on the mark. And this should bring Heath Ramshaw well within range. The Blues have had multiple looks at a first goal. This the best of them. Inserts. That seems a little bit harsh. <laughs> On that, which is the typical response when that one's called. And a minor square up in terms of the fact that wasn't a big 50. But still. Heath Ramshaw for Carlton's first. They finally get a six-pointer. And it gives them the lead against the Magpies. It's Collingwood Carlton in Smithies VFL and AFL.com.au and the AFL Live official app. Yeah, Ten minutes into this first quarter and some of the early possession winners on the ground. Nelson for the Blues has three for Collingwood. McRae has two. Talked about that possession count. 64% for the Blues so far in this game. 36 for Collingwood. So 
Graham Shaw with goal number four for the season. And we're back in the middle of the ground here at Icon Park. Good day, good morning for footy. And that will be recalled. Michael Wilcox will have a, a second go at it. And again, the two big rucks, Pitnet and Cox to go at it. Pitnet getting the tap down this time. Appearance notionally with the pies. Cox just dribbles the ball up to centre half forward. Picked up here by Kennedy. He kicks towards the pocket. Almost the mark taken. Well done to Quay. It's a dangerous ball and it should be shut down pretty quickly. And is through for a behind. Ben Crocker getting active against his former side as the kick goes long outside the 50, but it's going to come straight back in. Caden Schreiber has got it. I'll tell you what, Adam, I'll be disappointed if Dom McQuay doesn't put in a contender for mark of the year today. We know how well he can fly. Speaking of flying, Mason Cox comes through and takes the mark. He's one that's no stranger to taking a mark inside forward 50. Richmond fans will remember that back in 2018. First game since May 24. He's been working back from a knee injury. His first Smithies VFL game since round 21 last year. Let's see if he's got the trip. No, it's right to the top of the goal square and the Blues might be able to take this away. The handball from Lord was more in hope than anything else. It fell to Bins. His kick outside 50, dribbling ball, and the Blues should be able to work this out. Monaghan, handball over the top, and now they clear. Hayes, kick up the line, looking there for Kale. Couldn't find him, ball near the line, and Frampton will see it over. We'll have it tossed in. There are multiple AFL Premiership players out there for Collingwood today. One of them. Mason Cox, of course, was there. To remind you, Peter, of what happens at the end of September last year at the MCG. What a classic that was. Boundary throw in. I was there and remember, Adam. Thank you. It's okay. <laughs> Can't win them all. Vitals kick smothered. Pit net. Just falls on top of the ball carrier. Michael Wilcox says that'll be a ball up. These sorts of conditions that day, I remember. Perfect day. A little bit warmer, though. Give it that. A lot we'll, warmer. We'll thank you for bringing the sun back, though, <laughs> after your little joint in Europe. No, wasn't there either. I find that quite hard to believe. Really? Rain for two weeks. Terrible. <laughs> Another ball up here. Not much happening right now, just some repeat stoppage. And it's going to be Cox and Pitnet again. The ball does come to ground. Little dinky kick along the ground will only go as far as Ramshaw. He's tackled again. Another stoppage. Now, Peter, I'm trying to spot a scoreboard around the ground and actually see one. Luckily we've got one here in the box. We do. Eight play seven. Low score up midway through the first quarter as the kick goes up the line. Trying to take the mark was O'Keefe. And we will have it tossed in again. It's a manual scoreboard right there, but that's not being used today. Not, not Must be on this side. It is. It'll be yep. around the corner here. As we wait for this ball to be tossed back in. It's the home of the Smithies VFL Grand Final. We're getting closer to it. These two sides won't be featuring in the action as Martin managed to get the handball away. Moore is there. Can't do anything terribly effective. Badar is brought down. And that will be a free kick to the Pies. Looking to get something going forward of centre. As the long ball by Cooper McDonald. Sends it up towards the middle of the ground. Quay gets the handball out. Bins is there. Handball into space. This ball heading towards the boundary. McDonald will see it over. Oh, no. Insufficient intent. Well, they had the intent. The intent was to try and get to safety. Here's Martin, who's got the free kick for the Blues. He's going to go backwards. Kemp. At this level, Michael Voss putting some players on notice the last couple of weeks. I notice here and rewarding form at this level. Young back to Kemp and the kick going wide. 
Nice mark by Maher, and they get some overlap run going. Prout will kick up towards half forward. Getting in the way is Parker for Collingwood. Ball off hands. Working nicely is Moore. His kick wide is good. And Kale takes the mark. Now, is he going to have a shot himself? Immediately points it to the goals. Feels confident from his pocket. Paul McBomber says that he's found his place here in this blue side. Despite the lack of success this season, feels that building something at this level. Game number 50 in a blue jumper. Right near the boundary line. The kick is across the face and it's going to be marked on the last line of defence for the Pies, Adam. Give credit where it's due for Collingwood's defensive structure. That kick is scuffed and Nicky Christian on debut fumbles it over the line. Credit where it's due. The only Carlton goal that has been allowed was off the result of a feet, off the back of a 50 metre penalty. Every other shot the Blues have had have been low percentage shots at goal. Boundary throw in. Murkoff gets rid of Cox here. With Murkoff and Pitnett in this Carlton lineup today. In the ruck tandem. Mason Cox will have a big day ahead of him on return. Martin is wrapped up and going nowhere. Mason Cox, 124 games now for the 33-year-old at the top level. Did play two VFL games last year. Obviously was part of the Premiership winning team for the Pies. A game that you went to, Peter. You don't want to talk about too much. A couple of bounces. It won't end up anywhere near any particular player, that kick. It just went toward the line and went out. Gained some territory for Collingwood. And both sides get a chance to clear their benches. Yeah, all change. Hilarus Schmitz comes back in. Is he going to contest his ruck? It looks like he is. He's straight into it. Coming off the bench. Just held back there by Murkoff as the kick heads into the middle of the ground. That's a superb mark by Schreiber. He goes wider, looking for Lane. Having a really good season for the VFL Pies. Kick to Crocker up the line. Nicely taken under a little bit of pressure from Young. So Ben Crocker, 15 goals this season. Called to play on. Knows this ground very well. Kick, McQuay with the fist. Ball's going to spill to Sparks. He's immediately brought down in the tackle. Going absolutely nowhere, and we will have it tossed up. Inside 50 for Collingwood. Low scoring encounter so far between the traditional rivals. Murkoff. Ma trying to bullock his way through. Nelson throws it on the boot, but turns it over. And the mark has been taken by Air. Air returning from injury. A number of players doing so today for... This VFL side, Seavers over around the footy for Collingwood. Prout is there, racking up some nice disposals across half back. Ball right on the boundary line. Marnie picks it up fortuitously. Handball over the top, and they've got some overlap run happening. McRae ran out of room, sold his teammate into trouble. And we'll have the ball tossed up right on attacking 50 for Collingwood. Spoke of the fact that this is our grand final venue for the Smithies VFL. That's second play fourth yesterday, Peter and AFL.com. Did you AFL live official? That'd be our friend Joe Pignataro on that particular call with Austin Kruger. That was the third draw of the year. Yes. In Smithies VFL. First one not involving the Gold Coast Suns, who did claim the flag here last September. Ball is on the wing. Tracking it back and taking the mark is air. It was looking in board. It holds on to it now. Left foot down the line kick. It's two on one, but the one wins out. Glover giving off the quick handball. It's going to end up with McRae. Hand pass in toward Parker. Goes with the short ball. Did that go to distance? It did. We get a look at goal for Collingwood. I think that's Harry Marnie. It's going to line up. Yep, looking for goal number eight for the season for him. Playing the seven games in the time on it. Number 72 for Collingwood. <laughs> It's a big contingent of VFL listed pies out here today. Grand total of 14. This kick is going to miss, and it's going, speaking of level ball games, it's going to square it up here at Icon Park. So proud to bring the footy back in. Pitnet screaming for it on the broadcast side. That is absolutely ignored. Young 
They're just going to do it by short kick on that outer side. And Lockie Young this time will kick a long ball. Bring it outside the 50. Now it's heading up towards a very vacant 50 for the Blues. So plenty of time for Glover, although he has been met solidly by Kale to close the space nicely. Wilson trying to clear the ball for Collingwood. This is going up the line. It's going to come straight back in. Lockie Young will go across the grounds. Hayes works it to Kemp, to a Quay. Now Quay can run onto this footy. Got plenty of time and space. The number's pushing back for Collingwood. Here's Bins squaring it up. Badara's kicking a long ball looking for Pitt. Yeah, but cruising through is Jack Martin floating over the front. And he wants to go on with it. And I think for half a second there, Alex Burkhoff didn't think it was coming his way. Hands on hips and content <laughs> he, he, with life until the ball started coming. <laughs> He's realised very late the piece of that footy was heading in his direction. And lucky he had the presence of mind just to be aware that he was going to take that uncontested mark. It's important though, because that was going to be yet another low percentage shot at goal that Mart would have had to have taken if he didn't spot up Murkoff. So this is a much better look for the Blues. <laughs> Directly in front. A couple of goals for Alex Murkoff this season. And he has number three for the year. First for today. And puts the Blues in front in time on in quarter number one. This Smithy's VFL encounter. Mentioned, uh, Adam, that this is one of two matches to be played to finish off round 17. Coburg and Port Melbourne at Piranha Park is the other game to finish off. Yep. And a must win for Port Melbourne this afternoon as we head to, well, the last month of the season. Four rounds to go after this one. And whilst these two sides won't be featuring in finals action, they can actually have a say in how the, the ladder is shaped in terms of the teams that they are playing in the next couple of weeks. And out here today, 22 AFL list of players who still want to show something to their AFL coaches and selection panels as well late in the season. If there are any opportunities at the top level, defensive effort there by Jath. He then goes and picks up the ball, but just surrounded by Blues. Martin, one of those. With a couple of handballs, they will get away with it. Hayes is the leading ball getter on the ground. He's got eight. That was a handball out to set up another inside 50 for the Blues. They are dominating this game at the moment. Kick will come in board. It's a wobbler for Mark. Couldn't take it. Eventually, Parker with the dump kick back out one on one here. That's a nice mark that's been taken by McDonald. Had the better positioning on a Quay. He's looking to go in board by hand. Wilson. That might have been partially touched. The Matea will go around the corner, but position nicely for the Blues was Lord. Yep, I mean, good season. Last month averaging 22 disposals. All very happy with the 19-year-old's progress at the Blues. Mid-season recruit as Bins goes across the ground. Glover to cut off the ball for Collingwood. Short ball, Jath. Looks up. Doesn't see a hell of a lot that he likes ahead so looking like he's going to square it up into the middle of the ground where there are some numbers lining up Wilson took the mark now the ball in the arms of Peyton Brown he goes with a long one inside 50 plenty of numbers here for the Blues Prout will cut it off short ball Lord and Bins going to share it around. Lewis Young. Yes, they've gone around and around in circles here. Here is Cooper Lord. You'd expect Lord to feature prominently on this Sunday as a little short ball. Kemp. Back pocket for the Blues. Right near their magnificent training facility. They really have done a good job of, of this ground and the redevelopment. And here's Lockie Young. Looks up, again doesn't see a, a lot to kick to, so he's just going to hope and go up the line and go for the tall timber. 
came off Murkoff's hands and he said, I'm out of here. I'm going to sit on the bench for a while. So he ticked down towards quarter time in this opening quarter. So now First this... goal of the game, Pete, I was just going to say, we've got a... What have we got? No There's ruck. no ruck, no ruck for Carlton. Took a while for Hudson O'Keefe to get across. I was just going to say, Collingwood kicked the first goal of the game in the first minute. Since then, it's largely belonged to Carlton. Bytel. I wonder if he wanted the line there, but the ball just started bouncing the other way. Hayes gets another disposal. It's a high ball. Arriving late at the contest for Schreiber, then follows up, got the handball on. Hayes. Just wondering if one of the umpires had paid high. They have. A bit unlucky, though. Sparks went in. Made it really hard for Hayes not to get him high. Well played, I guess, if you want to be a bit cynical about it. Parker going down the line. What does Harry Kennedy do here? It's a fairly flooded 50. Crocker's asking for it near the square. Kennedy will drive it along in Crocker territory. Cox is down there as well. He just gets out. Mark Wakehamp. Yep, who goes wider. Just a reminder too for the AFL game that three emergencies, Kemp, Martin and Pitnet all out here for the VFL Blues as Will White will kick to an attacking position. The fist coming in from Frampton, but only as far as O'Keefe who needs to be careful. Jaff getting across. Kale's there. He's got space goal side. They've come streaming down. The goal's going to be kicked by Luke Nelson. Well, they needed to exercise some sort of caution there. Now, Kale doing the job for the Blues and setting that up. And, well, a bit of reward for effort. 3 2 20 plays 1 2 8. So we head towards quarter time. Leading disposal winner on the ground, Will Hayes with 11. Bins with nine, Lord with eight, and Kemp with seven. Lean the way, the best for the Pies, Parker with six. Carlton now plus 30 in disposals and plus five in inside 50s, unsurprisingly, after conceding the first goal of the game. That was off the back of a mistake. They've been pretty sound, the Blues, so far. These Collingwood VFL Magpies looking for... Their first win since knocking off the Blues here and Icon earlier this year. Cox winning the ruck comfortably by Tell. Falling over as he disposed of the ball. Hayes again has been quite prolific so far. Ramshaw involved as well. Low data inside 50. Trapping at Jaff. It ricochets toward the line. And out it goes. In the sunshine. A welcome return. After what we put up with yesterday. I know it wasn't great at Arden Street. Lucky you were in the commentary box there. It was raining sideways yesterday evening as well, Pete. I had another commitment there, and that wasn't fun either. Raining into our commentary area that particular occasion as we see a little kick toward the hotspot. Lemmy pretty tightly marked, and he was claimed high. And young Harry Lemmy gets another chance at goal for the Blues from directly in front. All the set shots that have gone through have come from this part of the ground so far. Third season on Carlton's list yet to debut. Obviously, it is a hard forward line to get into right now. Harry Lemmy going at a goal a game this year in Smithies VFL. Conversion rate of 13-9. And he drives it through. Carlton well and truly on top over the Magpies at Icon. Yeah, it's been a dominant opening quarter by, well... Notionally, would be the home team, even though it is a Collingwood home game. It's good to see. We talk about some of the experience coming into the, the Blues VFL line. Will Hayes, obviously, coming in and playing here, helping out. They're building some, some nice uh, depth in the VFL listed side of things, as opposed to the AFL players who are coming and going. It's been a tough season, but you know, there, there are some reasonable signs. And, Apart from the Geelong game, where they're absolutely obliterated here at Icon Park, they've had some very competitive results across the season. Last week, lost to the Bulldogs. It was a narrow loss. We've just had too many of them. Sparks held up with the footy, and that is quarter time here at Icon Park. 4 2 26. Carlton plays Collingwood. 1 2 8. Board 7 each for Ramshaw and Mark. Campbell Lane has 7 4. Collingwood. And we get set for quarter number two at Icon Park. And it's Pitnet 
and Mason Cox. 191 AFL games between them, Peter. Plenty of experience. Vitel immediately. Kennedy, there's a chance here. McRae left foot's on its way, and that's going to carry through. That's what Collingwood needed. And they now have started both quarters here with goals in the opening minute. Yeah, now it's the ability to, to carry that on. Obviously, Josh Fraser is making a few changes at quarter time. Ben McRae has played the eight AFL games this year. He gets 17 touches against the Eagles and three goals earlier this year. Was named as one of the emergencies for yesterday's loss to Hawthorne. Big loss too, wasn't it? Yeah. Billy Wilson, we should say, not playing for Carlton. Was due to return from injury. Not in the side today. As Pitt Nets, long ball inside 50 is going to be turned over. Frampton there, taking the mark. Here is the close option, as is Sparks, who had to take it as a bump ball in the end and was immediately wrapped up, going absolutely nowhere. I think uh, out of all of that, Will Hayes is racking up the disposals in quarter number one. A little miffed that he wasn't going to get a free kick. Cox trying to get the tap down. He'll have a second go. Ball pinballing around. Sparks getting his head over the footy able to clear it does eventually spill free some sort of space Prout wrapped up now they can get some run on the outside to Matias long kick inside 50 numbers at the back though for the Blues Lewis his kick was partially smothered they need to be just a little bit careful was Ramshaw looping handball it'll end up with Lewis again and they're running it outside the 50, dangerously. Ramshaw getting involved a couple of times. Now Bins. The kick looks to be cut off by Jaff. Couldn't complete the mark under pressure from Monaghan. All heading into the middle of the ground. Pye still with control. Cox, Vitel. Needs to be clean, is clean. Kennedy. No one really to kick to. Now he's going to go inside 50. Smith, well, he just ran under the footy in the end and it's been turned over. And Spins has got it, but he's going to have to give it back, I think. And I think the big ruse earned himself a free kick. Now, was he pushed out in that contest? Anyway. Let's see if... Smith who kicked a goal in the opening quarter in the opening minute to get the Pies going can add his second Smithy's VFL goal just inside 50 he's got plenty on it that is superb and he's up and about goal number two for the morning slash afternoon this is a nice response from the Pies early on in quarter number two. It's a big left boot that he's got. Triple VFLW grand final day today. Peter, we're looking forward to that. Bulldogs and Kangaroos getting underway shortly. Some colleagues of ours over there today at ETU Stadium. Yeah, that'd be a fitting finale. How are the Bulldogs going? I mean, considering in this competition, their start, their start coming in as a team, finishing way down the bottom and struggling to grand finals a couple of years later. It's a great, great story. They got some great use out of their AFLW girls in the middle of the year as well. Only Blackburn was dominating at this level. There's been an illegal shepherd here. Big Mason Cox will go bang. It's Collingwood with the momentum right now. And there's another chance at goal. The spin and the snap and the miss from Harry Marnie. Knew it as soon as it left the boots. That's Michael Lewis to bring the footy back in for Carlton. We'll go to Kemp. And run it to the 50. We'll kick long. Cox the player at the back off hands from Glover. We're going to play a bit of kick to kick here because Kemp's going to take it again. Thought about going on with it. McDonald locked him down. 
Prouts. Last disposal in quarter number one. That's an excellent delivery of the footy. Lord kicks a long high ball. Frampton was at the back, getting the fist in there. Schreiber sees it to the line, and we will have it tossed in. Brady Kemp, a bit unlucky perhaps to have been dropped from the AFL side. Had a good day against the Bulldogs. 18 touches, 11 marks against the Dogs at the top level. Has played the 15 games this year for Carlton in the AFL. Boundary throw in here. Hayes, what a day he's having now. 14 touches, but the kick just interrupted on the way through. Glover fumbling after receiving the handball. Ends up back in Blue's hands. Ma into the pocket. Frampton getting a fist on it. Hayes again. Then he's get the handball out. Glover had him wrapped up. Martin then taken to ground as well. Ball did come loose and then it was regained. Carl going around the corner. And then the snap towards goal, but not enough angle on it for Hudson O'Keefe. Uh, he almost brought it back as Josh Ayer to bring the footy back into play for Collingwood. An opening quarter. The ball was really parked on that outer side of the ground. This quarter, they're working the broadcast side as the Pies will look to work it in. Here is Schmidt. Let's see that burst of speed. No, he just wanted to tap it on. Trying to find some space was Kennedy. And they have hacked it forward. They've done a pretty good job of it too. Brown trying to put it into a dangerous position. Bins under pressure. He's got some teammate support. Ends up with a Quay, whose kick will be short. But Lockie Young takes the mark. His kick's going to be chopped off though. Mason Cox streams in to take the footy. And we'll look to send Collingwood back inside 50. They had the control early on in this second quarter. Little chipping ball over the top by Tell. And we'll kick towards centre half forward. Short kick, Stahl and Finn McRae's got it. Eighth game at this level. McRae launches from outside 50, but it's going to the left. And another behind. Added to the Collingwood total here in this second quarter as the clouds start to come across Icon Park. Just check the radar, though, and that's all clear still. McRae missing from a spot where he did kick that first goal of the second quarter from. The Blues just flirting with danger here. Kick into the middle of Icon Park. Cox does get a hands on it. And it's up for grabs in the middle of the ground right now. Jaff coming in for Collingwood to apply some pressure. And a ball up near the circles. Did hint that might be some rain coming, Peter. But later today. Late, late, late. Okay, that might be an issue for Coburg and Port Melbourne, perhaps. Collingwood ball as we go out wide. This is Hayden Brown with the footy. Still two kicks from home. Jaff is... Begging for the ball in board. He's looking longer than that, though, Brown. No, nope. last moment just pulls the kick up a little bit for Campbell Lane. Seven touches for him. Was the leading ball getter for Collingwood in the first quarter. They're being careful right now. The Magpies, Sparks with the footy. Pointing long. One lead ignored. That was Smith. Smith is in the vicinity, though. Cutting across in front, taking a relieving mark was Young. Carlton holding things up again. The little chip over the top that needed to be careful. I wonder if Monaghan was told to play on there. And the ball just slipping right past as the Blues work it through the middle. Carl going over the top, just chipping into the space and setting a task for Murkov. He's got Frampton with him. Premiership defender for the Pies. It goes out of play. Long run for that boundary umpire. Had to run 50 metres to, to pick up that footy. Doing a lot of the heavy lifting on the, this side of the ground as we've got this ball tossed back in. Let's see how the Blues respond. Pitnet just landed in his arms in the end. He fumbled, but we've got this ball locked in. We'll have it tossed up. 20th position. Second last on the Smithies VFL table. Third last for the Blues. Yes. Smith just worried off it by Pitt Nets. Jaff. Just a lamb ball over the top. Not the greatest. Lord trying to weave his way through. It's here is a mark clashing. Ball near the line. We'll have it tossed in. 
home game for Collingwood. Notionally, it seemed that Big Park is a bit out of action due to all the rain that's been happening the uh, the last month or so, Adam. I think it's normally the home base for the VFL umpires as well. So, like a lot of grounds around the traps right now, not in great condition. Icon Park in magnificent condition compared to some of the other venues around. Got another ball up here. It's the Blues that suddenly find themselves needing a goal. Can Martin provide that? That was ugly. So ugly, it didn't register a score at all. And the ball is handed back to Josh Hare. Wilson. McRae. So they are deliberately being careful by foot at the moment, Collingwood. Di Mattia has it now. And he wants to hold on to it, not give it away cheaply. Long down the line when there's no other option. Camp out marking Smith. He wants to go back inside D50. Ramshaw. Now we're looking at Ma. Now wide for Bins. Now Carlton playing the tempo footy here. He will take on the man on the mark there. Got himself into a little bit of trouble. Does get out of it. The hand pass option was available. Beta was there for the Blues to help out. And now it's going to go out of play. Now for a boundary throw in. Just a bit of a lull in proceedings right now at Icon. Beta, the 23rd player for the Blues. We mentioned Nicky Christian playing his first game today for Collingwood. Son of Michael Christian. This ball's tossed back in. Murkoff might have been pushed in the back there by Mason Cox. He's trying to argue the point. Advantage has been paid, although all the players stopped. Cale managed to get that handball out. Here's an opportunity for the Blues. And they've got it. Great goal in the end. And nicely finished. The Blues, well, they get one back. Really important goal in this second quarter. And it's Xavier Ma who's kicked it. And he's got his first of the day. And goal number five for the season. Just restoring a little of the balance of power considering all the possession that the Pies have had in this second term. As we get to the midpoint, turn number two. 11 point ball game, both teams clearing their benches again. Leading disposal winners on the ground. Jackson Binns and Will Hayes for Carlton with 15 apiece. Lord and Ma with 12. Kemp with 10, best for Collingwood, Lane and McRae both have nine disposals. Inside 50 count, 19 to 15 in favour of the Blues. That bounce uncontestable, we go again. The hit out count, 12 for Mason Cox and nine for Mark Pitnett. Murkoff has four so far. The ball will be thrown up after the mishap with the bounce by Tell. Taken to ground, may not have... Had the chance to dispose of it. The ball did come out. Pitt net releasing the handball. Ma now outside of the boot around the corner. It's going to fall to Moore. That was by force, not necessarily by design. And Ashton Moore can line up for another goal for the Blues and make it a 17 point ball game. Oh, bit of a. Control C, Control V from what we, we saw in the opening quarter, Adam, in terms of. Pies dominating early in the quarter and the Blues just pegging them back. Moore's left foot ball is going to miss. It's a behind for the Blues. Another Blue out there yet to make an AFL debut. Frampton kicking it. And kicking it. Looking for a big room. Front position. Couldn't take it off hands. It's going to be right into the middle of the ground. Cox trying to, from, from front on contact, or trying to avoid it against Proud, who did really well to take the mark. Kemp in a little bit of trouble. Lewis. Now the ball long with Proud again, but it's going to be turned over. And here is Rue. Little Rue Schmidt. Mid season recruit. Hype around him as well. Here's a quake. Almost the mark. Tapped out by Cox. Off hands by Tell. Long ball inside 50. Which way will it fall? Ramshaw doing some nice work against Mulvogue. Handball across to Bins. And they should be able to clear this nicely. Nelson 
will work into the middle of the ground to Hayes. Plenty of disposals in the game. Oh, the kick's going to be turned over, though. Ma had no chance of picking that up. And it's Parker who's got it. And he sends it straight to centre-half forward. Quay getting a hand to it. May also get on the end of it. Lewis coming through. He was dispossessed. Good contest, this one. McDonald trying to get his hands on the footy for Collingwood. Lewis again dispossessed. McDonald will have another go at it. And another go as he goes head first into a Quay. And the umpire will call a stop to that and will have a tossed up on 50. Ben's now joining Hayes on 15 disposals. Leading ball getters on the ground. Seven leading ball getters on the ground. All in navy blue right now. Pitnett and Cox do battle once more. It's well controlled initially, but then the handball back into McDonald was a bit more difficult. And Hayes will dump out for Carlton towards the wing. Carl at the fall. Game 50. For these VFL Blues, Bins now the leading ball getter outright on the ground. More with GR for company. He just did enough there with two GF to force at least a neutral ball. It goes out of play. Made his debut against North Melbourne. That famous game from a couple of weeks ago at Marvel. Not sure you're in the country for that one, Peter. But it was not. Quite the dramatic finish it. Mm. Under the lid that particular Sunday afternoon. Boundary throw in. It's a high ball for the Blues. Lemmy's underneath it and not paid the mark. Had to get the handball out quickly. Carl in the vicinity as well. Glover has it for Collingwood. Dumping back out toward the middle of the ground that just slipped through some hands for Sievers. Now we go inside 50. Kemp is tracking back. He is the intercept king for the Blues. Yep, and reliably taking that mark and sending it wider Bins goes up the line Stevens he'll go wider looking for Hayes must have brought his own footy dike on Park he's had that much disposal on the leads Moore he'll kick long and a high ball pit Nance and Cox wrestling around the body by Nelson right to the tee of the goal they've got to be careful here and just the presence of mind from Caden Schreiber to push that into the post. Otherwise, it took a wicked bounce. It's heading towards goal. Brody Kemp and Heath Ramshaw have combined for nine intercept possessions so far. Bytel giving out the handball. Collingwood looking to rebound off half back. And it's a kick to a one on one. Crocker versus Lewis Crocker. Barely sighted in this game. It gets out marked by Michael Lewis. Gets his kick in toward the middle of the ground. Hayes has had it on a string today. That time was pressured. Eventually it ends up with Ma going back into attack and Frampton gets in in front of Lemmy. It falls out the back here. Underground handball turns over. Moore gets the snap and kicks the goal. Another goal from turnover. Missed a set shot earlier in the game. Ashton Moore that time had no trouble. And the Blues extending their lead again. It's a game high 19. They've kicked the, the last couple, have the Blues. Now starting to get some, some nice distance on their opponents. I remember back to that uh, game here back in round number three when it was a one-point result for the Pies, 12-11-83 to 12-10-82. Looking through, it was the Blues who held the advantage at half time in that game for the Pies had a nice third quarter fight back. We're going to need similar today, the way things are going. 41 plays, 22. Heading towards time on now in quarter number two as Cox gets the ball down. High ball from Bytel inside 50. And it's been turned over. Prout going wide and effective as well. Young, this is Lockie Young, kicking to Lemmy, on centre wing, out of sight, short ball, they seem to have options scattered up the ground, Nelson, now the kick inside 50, but Cox takes a strong mark, and can the Pies rebound, it's this kick into the middle of the ground, McDonald's, working there with Sparks, now through hands, here's McRae, he handballs inside 50, Kennedy, will look to kick across the ground. That's nicely done. And 
nicely finished as well. And Chad Mulvogue will be the player to have the shot at goal. Kick one goal two this season in what is his ninth game. And spending a bit of time forward here for the Pies. Well, they need this one, obviously. Taking plenty of time as well. About 20 out. Let's see if he can finish. And he can. First goal for Molvo for the day. And the Pies, well, an important one. Just to stop the momentum of the Blues. 41 plays 28 into time on here in this second quarter of the, the Smithies VFL. I mentioned, uh, Adam, the run home. Obviously, these two teams can't make the finals, but they can shape them, of course. Next week for Collingwood, another home game at an away venue. They take on Richmond at the Swinburne Centre. It's the Swinburne Centre, Adam. Then they've got the bye. Then they've got Sydney away. And then they've got Brisbane at AIA Centre in the final round, potentially to see where Brisbane finishes in the finals mix. For the Blues, they've got the bye next week. Then they've got Brisbane back here. Then they've got Geelong down the highway. And then they've got Richmond. Uh, and that's a home game as well. So Tigers still very much in contention for the finals as well. It's been a remarkable year for, for Richmond. They've been doing some great things at the Swinburne Centre, given how many injuries they have on both their AFL and VFL lists. Di Matea getting the handball out here. McRae, Collingwood want momentum back inside 50. Equate gets a fist on it. Sievers then tries to tap on further forward. Kemp has been good today. Gets the dump kick back out. And Moore having a good second quarter for the Blues. Takes the mark here. We'll go short to Lewis. This is Michael Lewis from the VFL list. Blues have 10 VFL listed players today. Was named as an emergency. May have been the late inclusion for Wilson. Goes down the line. Hung in the air for quite a while. It was read pretty well by O'Keefe. Gives it off to Hayes. Hayes was running into trouble. Had to go back to O'Keefe. Just missed more. And picked off instead by Schreiber for Collingwood. Looking in toward the middle of Icon Park. Left football. Intended for Kennedy. Got crunched by a number of blues and tapped on further by Bytel. Equay's coming in but was second to the ball. Brown released the handball. Barney gets the shot away and that will be a goal for Collingwood. Good footy through the corridor and it's back into single figures again. Seven point ball game at the old Princess Park. A good encounter as well this one between these two. Things are opening up now. End to end football and Margin seven points Heading towards half time. And just the overlap run getting the job done for the pies. They stream inside 50. So, ball back in the middle. And well, how will the Blues respond now? Oh, Van Ray sets the footy down. Schmidt into the ruck. Pitnet stayed down and won it. Here's Ma going inside 50. Schreiber there for the Pies, just creating the contest. And a solid return from his knee injury. Played the, the 10 games now for, for the 11th game today for the Pies. It's Schreiber. Schmidt doing the ruck work. Ball tapped to ground. Wilson can't go anywhere. Ball will be tossed up. Pit net. Martin. What's the handle on it? McRae trying to get through. Can't do so. Martin twisting, turning. How long do you have the footy umpire? McRae going absolutely nowhere. Ball tossed up again. One more go. Try and get something going here, Adam. And it's all yours. Is Pit net. That's over the shoulder. So that will be a free kick. It will go the Blues way. So the big fella. What can he do? Throw. Just put the ball up towards the top of the goal square. Lemmy flying. And take the mark. He's going to have another go at it. Ball partially smothered in the air. Now Ma 
Can he have a shot? He can, and it's good. Xavier Ma with his second goal of the day. And the Blues again, just keeping Collingwood at bay. Pies making a run. Uh, that's an important goal for Xavier Ma. Goal number six for the season, second in the game. Seventh goal of the quarter. We have a shootout at Icon Park between the oldest rivals in the game. Have to go back through the history books to find out the last time at AFL level Collingwood and Carlton played here. I have that for you, Peter, right in front of me. Round Was 18 it? in 2000, a 111 point win for the Blues that day over Collingwood in front of 30,000 people. Uh, well, that's a it's relatively Year 2000. Re yeah, that's a relatively recent, 24 years ago, all things considered. Only a couple of weeks off from exactly 24 years ago that particular game in early July as we have another recall bounce. Considering, you know, Collingwood was moving all of its games, big games, to the MCG by that stage and that was the yep. first year without Victoria Park. That was a Carlton home game. Yep. <laughs> yes. It would have been Optus Oval back then. Here we go, Hayes giving off the handball. Ma, Blues have momentum back here. Going inside 50 once more. Just gets away from Frampton. It bounced into Lemmy's arms. Had to get the handball out quickly. Hot ball to win. Parker might have been claimed high by Martin. Umpire does blow the whistle. Kyle Van Ray, that umpire. And the free kick will go to the former cricketer's way. Parker, dangerous kick. And Binns picks it off. Jackson Binns is about to become the leading ball getter on the ground with disposal number 20. That was his fourth mark of the game as well. A couple of intercept possessions. And now looking to extend the Carlton lead out to 19 once more. Got very close to the mark. It's a driving kick and it had just enough on it. Raining goals at Icon Park as we approach halftime. That was a hell of a kick from uh, that distance. I mentioned no massive breeze to, to speak of here at Icon Park. Just go back to that, the date of that game in 2000, because you've got that detail, don't you? It was the 9th of July in the year 2000, that particular game. Okay. Carlton 28-12, 180. 180. Yeah. Collingwood 10 9 69. 30,000 people were here. Yep. It'd be almost at capacity, I'd say. Brett Ratton had 31 disposals and kicked three goals straight that day. Camparelli with the 27, Simon Beaumont had the 26. Smith going to work with the pit net. Pit net stayed down. Just Ma trying to force it forward. But instead, it's in the hands of the Pies as Wilson goes wider. He's kick looking for Parker. He's brought down by Bins and wrapped up. And the umpire says, we'll throw it up. It just seems to be a bit of an anomaly, though, that Carlton and Collingwood would play here. I wonder whether there was anything to do with the fact that the Olympics was yep, there and perhaps. the MCG was being used for the football tournament. It does seem July was quite early. It was September, the Olympics, wasn't it? Anyway, we'll talk about that more at halftime. As uh, this ball cut off by Ma. Is there another one in the blues? As this kick going high, Glover is there for Collingwood. Wilson under all sorts of pressure. And the umpire will call a stop to it. We'll do our research at halftime. We'll come back to you in the third quarter. Yeah, the, the 2000 season was brought forward a month, Peter. I do believe the grand final was in the, on the first Saturday of September. There's this ball off hands. Right near the line. Martin, he was over. So we'll have it tossed in. That is right. It was brought forward. Two Blues kicked five goals that day. I'll give you one, Peter. All right. Lance Whitman. Yep. You will never guess the other one. Okay, but blue that kicks five that day. Five goals straight, in fact. It does seem... Good luck with that. It does seem a little counterproductive if you... I'll even give you a hint. He wore number 37. Boundary throw in. That's probably not going to help you. <laughs> Back to the footy here because we've got a good game. Bins receiving the handball from Pittnet, Then goes around the corner. It actually fell dangerously here. Frampton just getting in there to make sure there was no shot fired. Giaf now needing to find a way... Around some pressure, Air had it and lost it. GF goes in again, gets taken to ground. It's been locked inside forward 50 here. The Blues have kicked four goals in this second quarter, as have Collingwood. 
the Blues got the jump early after conceding the first. Kicked four goals in a row to end the first quarter. Bytel to Wilson. Kick didn't go far. Moore just giving it up to Mulvogue. Out into some space on the wing. Crocker versus Lewis. Crocker missing it in the air. Handball out. Kemp. And now Bader just pulling the kick. High contact free kick. And the umpire was going to pay advantage for Proud initially. But it will come back now to Cooper Lord. Minute to go. See the signs just on the bench. Yep, the one sign. I think both representatives for the two clubs showing that sign right now. Two coaches, or two, two benches are very close together here at Icon Park as Prout inside 50. Blues looking for a late one. Martin reading it nicely off the pack, then taken to ground. Hand pass comes out. McDonald look away. Handball. Collingwood's kicked one goal with this kind of setup so far today. Kennedy inside 50 to a one on one. Crocker being quiet so far. Kemp worries him out of it. He's been very good today so far. Has Brody Kemp. High ball here. Another disposal coming up for Bins. He's been outstanding so far. 23 to half time, Peter. The yeah, Rebel VFLW Grand Final is just underway at ETU Stadium in Port Melbourne. Here is Kemp. He'll work it back across. They're just going to share around these two because they know we're talking about them. Kemp, Bins, Kemp. Siren. 53 plays 34. And what is a really good... Sarah Coglu with you and quarter number three is about to get underway. It's a good game, Peter. The goals were flowing. That's a much better bounce from Michael Wilcox. He kind of stuffed up the last one. There you There's been a few recalls today, but a good start to this second half. Hayes, speaking of good starts, disposal number 22 goes inside 50, but it's well marked by Schreiber. Caden Schreiber with the footy here for Collingwood. So Blues kick four goals in each of the first and second quarters. Both sides breaking even in quarter number two. Collingwood had the slow start after kicking the first goal of the game in the first minute. They also kicked one in the first minute of the second quarter. Wilson's kick smothered but did well on recovery by Tal. Running into Prout, lost the ball, Bins. Going inside 50, he's a leading ball getter on the ground and the 50 gamer will line up here. It's Carl who will look to snap this one through. Should mention the leading disposal winners on the ground. Jackson Bins with 24. Hayes with 22. Ma with 19. Best for the Pies. Bytel and McRae with 12 apiece. It's 19 point margin as we speak. It's now 25. He kicks the goal. He's having a nice little game. 50 today. The Blues are out to a game high lead 33 inside 50s to 24 in favor of the blues leading the way in terms of kicks handballs marks mark 70 to 38 hit outs 21 to 16. well they are dominating really maybe based on those numbers should be a little further in front but the pies just they can get a bit of a run on here can start to put some pressure on in, in real time, the Blues have actually kicked three goals in the last four or five minutes of play. They kicked two late goals in the second quarter. They've picked up where they left off. Pitt Net and Cox going at it. Cox, well, maybe a little surprised that it came down to him by Tell. Shot the handball out. McRae doing this handball, handball sort of stuff. Kennedy. Eventually it spills free. Lane. Kick towards the pocket, looking for Crocker. He's doesn't have much impact. Brody Kemp standing him and will have the ball tossed in. The pattern of the game, the first half, was Pies getting out to an early lead. We're being pegged back. That's Cox. Ball cleared out. Lord puts in the path of Lemmy. Who has time to steady. He's kicked over the top, just pitching it in front of Glover. Worried off the footy. Nicely done again by Ma. And they can run it inside 50. Kale can keep going. He might decide to go himself. Another bounce. This would be spectacular if he can finish. He can. Superb goal. 
doing it all himself. Game number 50 for the Blues. That is a superb goal. He was assessing, assessing. He wanted to do the team first thing. He wanted to do the team first thing and then said, nah, I'm just going to do it myself. Two in about two minutes to Ned. And they're kicking clear now, the Blues. Let's tap it to either side of half time. They kick two late goals within two minutes of each other. Late in the second quarter, Ma and Bins kicking those goals. Then the siren went for half time. We've come back out with Ned Cowell going bang, bang. Again, within the space of two minutes. Under siege right now, Collingwood, 31 point ball game. At the 23 minute mark of the second quarter, the margin was just seven points. Four in a row for the Blues, and they go again. Pit net, Martin. Inside 50 we go now. Pulling the kick late was Lord. Lemmy's going to see it go out. No, it doesn't. It does stay in. Back to Martin. Hayes. Thought about kicking. Went by hand instead. Bins. Cox did get a hand on it. It fell short there. Bins now. Had to jump for it. Lane has him. Under siege, uh, the Magpies right now. Hand pass comes out. The snapback goal oh. from Lord. It's five in a row. The former Roo goes bang from the pocket. All three goals in this second half so far from that pocket. They're an irresistible force right now, Carlson. They certainly are. An absolute purpose in this second half. And power have been turning to his team just firing them up saying let's keep going been a tough season try and get some some late wins on the board certainly haven't been too far away but they've got the score on the board now and how will the pies respond it's five in a row peter since the 25 minute mark of the second quarter as ball put down, pit net. What's the handle on it? Cox trying to find a path through. Hayes will be laying the tackle now. Pit net again. Blues looking to go forward. Stevens taken away from him. Wilson getting the handball out for Collingwood. Here's McRae. Handball over the top for Lane. Jaff will go the long kick up inside 50. Front position there for McDonald. Couldn't take the mark. Crocker laying the tackle. Now the pressure intensifying on the Blues defenders. And the umpire will come in and toss the footy up. So the sun's out again, which is good to see here at Icon Park. Cox getting the tap down. And that's a throw. Free kick going the way of the pies. And who will it be going to? will end up in the arms of Jack Bytel who will I think he's going to go back and have the shot Mason Cox standing on the goal line Rue Schmidt there as well so they've got the tall players right on the goal line hitting it down there as well so Jack Bytel just the one goal this season at VFL level he kicks from 52 out it's got the trip. Not the accuracy, though. Through for one behind. Well, our leading ball getter on the ground in black and white. 16 disposals. A couple of marks. Five clearances. Kemp with the kicking in duties here for the Blues. Ten marks already today. Had 11 at oh. AFL level. And he's given it right back to Bytel. Wants to go in board this time for McRae. Can't make it stick. Cox going in. Blues ball though. It was Carl winning it back. The tap back from Murkoff. Framped him in there, framped him in there as a as his Jaff. Now Lane had it and lost it. Hayes hand pass in board for Ma. Blues are looking for six in a row and they're out again. It's a chipping ball into the pocket. How's it wait for Carl? Wilson applying enough pressure. It goes out in that pocket where the Blues have done a hell of a lot of damage already in this third quarter. Yeah, three goals to one behind. Eight minutes down in this third quarter. Pitnet 
Getting that front position, taking out of the ruck, putting it on the boot. Has it pitched just inside the boundary line? It has. We'll have it tossed in. Bins, 28 disposals. Hayes with 24 for Carlton. A fair way down to Bytel. The best for the Pies with 17. Hit net. Ball around the body by Monaghan. Goes across the face and through for another behind. But peppering the goals are the Blues in this third quarter. Nearly Frampton in the long sleeves. 15 touches and five marks against the Cats. At the top level last time out. Big punch on the ball there by Young. Ends up in Blues hands again. White going into the pocket. And Giaf is in the right spot. Two Giaf has the footy for Collingwood. In desperate need of the next goal. Hillary Smith was offering a lead on the outer side. It's one back though by Ramshaw. Ma going further wide. Kemp. Gave out the handball, held on to it a long time. Now Carl, after getting a little dinky kick inside 50 off the boot of Stevens. Collingwood trying to rebound out of D50 once more. Bytel tackled immediately. Ball did come out, Hayes fell on top of it. McRae's there for Collingwood. Prout falls on top of it, ball up. So we'll have this ball tossed up. Smith, but Pitnick got the front position down to Hayes, Stevens, Pitnick again, Ramshaw, his kick inside 50, coming out to meet it was O'Keefe, couldn't quite connect. Parker's kick across the ground is good, Dimitia, his kick dangerous, three quarters of that mark is going to be counted as 100% of it for Harry Marnie. Standing the mark is Lewis Young. Oh, the kick going to be turned over, I suspect. White getting involved. And Prout might have taken one high. He did. Top one high from Sparks. And they look to go inside 50 again. There's a few Carlton forwards just with their hands up saying, kick it to me. So he's going to go to the pack of players. O'Keefe hopelessly outnumbered. Ball tapped towards the line. Dimitia. Handball over the top, finds Marnie. His kick clearing into the middle of the ground. It's going to be temporary relief because here's Brody Kemp again to take the mark. He has that possession number seven for Kemp. And he does find the target. Quick hands out from Young. Carl again going for his third goal in this pocket in this third quarter. Is there any danger that he was going to pass that off? No, he pointed straight to the goals and fair enough too the way he's playing from that pocket at him. One was a set shot, one was from open play. They are breaking this game open right now. The Blues margin will be 43 if this goes through. Again, it was seven at the 25 minute mark of the second quarter. It happens quickly for the Blues. Spinning it in his hands. 50th VFL appearance for the Blues for Ned Carl. Right football is missing. We talked it up too much. <laughs> Rightly so. It would have been his third goal of the quarter. Blues are on fire here at Icon. Ah, commentator's curse alive and well. As we wait here for Jath to bring the footy back in, going a short start to Wilson. Need a response and need it quickly. Jath again on the overlap. Oh, called to play on too. He didn't complete the mark. Took Murkoff a little while to realise. Little chipping ball is into a dangerous position because Moore's got the front position for the Blues. Good tackling pressure. This is Nicky Christian who's at the bottom of the pack. Welcome to Smithy's VFL football. And he trots away. The 23rd player today, the son of Michael Christian. Premiership player. Pitnet getting it down, working with Moore. Handball into space. Stevens did well through the traffic. He's quick kick inside 50. He's going to be turned over. Working there. Parker. 
Goes across the ground dangerously. Ayres got some work to do. Worried off it by Bins. Who can steady? He can have the shot and kick the goal. A defensive error by the Pies. And Jackson Bins has his second goal of the day. And now this is starting to be a big margin between these two sides here at Icon Park. Some player at this level, Peter, averaging 26 disposals and five marks this year in the Smithies VFL. Got an AFL debut against the Cats earlier this year in the team of the year for Smithies VFL last year as well. We know what he brings at this level, just looking for those opportunities higher up. And two goals today for Jackson Bins. Third multiple goal kicker for the Blues today as well. 29 touches, 7 marks, 5 intercept possessions. 4 goals, 2 to 1 behind in this third quarter, midway through. Another good bounce from umpire Wilcox, then socket off the ground by Bytel, but not much penetration on it. Pratt was at the end of it, tried to play some sockets in McRae. Martin just getting the handball out. High kick going around the corner. For Archie Stevens had a bit to do in this third quarter so far. GF giving the free kick away to Moore. He had a good second quarter. Did Ashton Moore. Ramshaw for Hayes. Just pushed off the kick. Blues are looking for another one. This one's going to be cut off by Schreiber. Last line of defence for Collingwood. Oh. And turns it over. Lockie Young has it. This will be for seven in a row for Carlton and fifth in a row for this third quarter. Which is still fairly young. And it's Lockie Young on the right boot and missing. No answers for the Magpies right now. Well, the struggle is real for the Pies. Glover to bring the footy back in. His kick's a good one. Vitell. And he'll go wider and find Mason Cox. Looks up the line, looks inboard, looks indecisive. So just throws it onto the boot. Intercept mark taken by Prouts. Very good today for the Blues, says Logan. And the kick is okay for Stevens. 12 disposals for Prouts. There's the kick from Ramshaw going over the top. Just being held off, it was White there. Jaff getting involved. Now Glover turned over. Murkov, whistle, holding the footy. Previous to that ball being released, it's going to be a Blues free kick anyway. And he wanted to play on or have the set shot. Doesn't matter because Hudson O'Keefe's got it in his arms. Remembering too, this is without Liam McMahon in the team for Carlton today. Yep. Who's right up there in terms of their goal kicking this season. Four goals for the year. Currently serving a suspension for rough conduct. So, all here. Hudson O'Keefe. Gets it his first of the day. And that's pretty good. Third goal for the season for Hutto. There's the Blues now. This is a big, big margin they're putting on margin now 51 points here at Icon Park 13886 to 5535 as we head past the midpoint of this third term second term of the Rebel VFLW grand final it's North Melbourne 6440 leading Western Bulldogs 128 and one game to come to round out round 17 Coburg taking on Port Melbourne that at Piranha Park it's a two o'clock bounce. This would be only the third win of the year for Carlton in the VFL, but they have had a good month. The only bad performance of late was against Richmond in a TV game at the Swinburne Centre. Did beat GWS a couple of weeks ago, competitive against Footscray and Southport in the last month. So the Blues actually finding some form in the back half of the year here. Now we've got another free kick for Ashton Moore. It's 
Seven goals in a row. This would be eight more. Has he got the range from here? Kicked one in the second quarter. Right to left. It didn't look like it was going to come back. Marked on the line. Murkoff will be the one to finish for the Blues. He'll be put on the angle, though. We'll have to step around to his right. That will actually make it a lot more difficult, Peter. He's pretty much on the boundary line now. Jackson Binns is calling for it, saying, I don't think you... I don't... I got backing you in here. Jackson Binns is standing there. Oh, no, there we go. There you go. And he finds him. Murkoff had kicked a goal earlier in the game. Jackson Binns is going for number three. He's nearly already got the JJ votes wrapped up. It's a right football around the corner. That'll help. That is now three goals for the man who's had the most of the footy today. Three goals for Jackson Binns. 31 touches, seven marks, five intercept possessions. And the lead has blown out to 57. Well, he went over to uh, Alex Murkov and said, thanks, mate. And I think there was a sense of relief that he kicked it as well because he was calling for that for a good 30 seconds. He was on his own. And he just eventually... Alex saw him and said, yeah, probably should kick it to you. So, anyway, all's well that ends well there. A penny for the thoughts of Josh Fraser right now. What is happening to Collingwood? Wow, it's a tough run. Nine AFL-listed players in the lineup. It's been a tough season at AFL level as well, comparatively speaking. O'Keefe into the ruck, working with Smith. Ball into the path here of Sparks for Collingwood, wrapped up in the tackle. And the umpire will toss it up. But, you know, Maru Schmidt kicked two goals and doing some nice work in the ruck, helping out Mason Cox today. Probably learning a lot along the way too. He's young. Good job for the Blues, except he's turned the footy over. Jath dropped what he should have taken really in the end. Martin for the Blues and now they'll go inside 50 again and they're lining up more this time but he quite have the trip his previous shot at goal from a similar distance but a chance to add his second goal to the tally As we're into time on now in this third quarter Ashton Moore just inside the 50, kick is off targets. 93 playing 35 here at Icon Park today. Mason Cox, 17 hit outs, 11 disposals and four marks so far today. He played just the two VFL games last year, Peter. Averaged 49 hit outs in those two games. So that would be a total of 98. Those two appearances at this level last year. Blues have been outstanding since the latter stages of the second quarter. Again, the margin was just seven points. 25 minutes into quarter number two. Right now, it is 58. Malvo tackled as he got the handball out. Ma was there for Carlton. Young involved as well. Tried to guide it on through to Martin. Comes loose once more. Sparks turning it over. Moore being good. Ball does come out. Now the switching ball, but slipping over was Bins. It was coming via Nelson. Bins had to play the role of tackler in the end. It does eventually end up with Monaghan. Into the pocket we go. Lemmy with the vision in board, but all he did was pick out Bytel. Collingwood. Right now, need to go coast to coast. Di Matteo has it. He does. On the left. Worked into the middle of the ground. Task set for Longmire. Not doing too much today. And the footy's been turned over. Ramshaw will go wider. Here's Bins. Three goals today for the Blues. To Martin. Who's got a runner alongside. It's Lord. Who's kicked inside 50. It's a touch footy. Glover just decides to go half volley style. Lane. And now the ball heading forward. No, it's going to be turned over again. Here's Kemp. And 50. Frustration there, I suggest, for Ben Crocker, who's having an animated discussion with the umpire. 
and saying, well, I really didn't move. And I think the umpire is saying, well, you needed to move. And he's saying, well, I held my position. Anyway, I'm paraphrasing what's going on there. But let's say Ben Crock is not happy. He's seen much of the footy. And so here we go. Kim can back up his great defensive work with a goal down the other end. Just the one goal this season, his third game at the level. It's just off target. A big lead for the Blues. 94 playing 35 as we tick down to three quarter time. 12 marks, seven intercept possessions now for Kemp. He's putting up pretty much the same numbers he did last week. Against the Bulldogs, out of play we go. Again, Colling with their foot skills really letting him down inside defensive 50 right now. Smith up against O'Keefe in Rakia. O'Keefe just getting Smith out of the way, then goes onto the right boot, but it's going to fall to the near side. 60 point ball game now. It's become a 10 goal game pretty quickly for Hampton. Running out of the square. Long to the outer side here at Icon Park. Cox came late to impact on Hudson O'Keefe. It comes to ground. McRae getting an intercept ball. There's a ninja blue just behind this stack. on, I wonder. Ball up is called for. And there is a Carlton player a little slow to get up. I think it is Hudson O'Keefe. Hopefully he is okay. Will contest the ruck here. Against Smith, gets it down. Kennedy tackled immediately. Wilson going back now. Bytel has some time. On to the left boot he goes. It's low and down the line. It's trickling along. Cox never bending over to pick it up. So we'll have this ball thrown in on center wing. And a side smattering of fans today. Go for this ball. Hudson O'Keefe, who got it down, but Bytel's kick up towards half forwards. No one could take the mark. Lewis just went without it. Now a chance here for the Pies. It's Kennedy's kick to an open goal square. It might bounce through. Didn't quite get the break. And through for one behind. So Michael Lewis having to drop down. Hasn't had too much work to do down there in this quarter. Just a handful of behinds for the Pies. Young, Lockie Young's got it in the back pocket. His kick going up the line. Kale will just kick a ball up towards Lemmy. Takes the mark on centre wing. Looks up, they're breaking for him now. The kick going a, a little bit shorter. And Kale picks it up. Right near the boundary line is Nelson. Puts up a high footy, falls to the back. Who's going to be there to pick it up? Oh, it might be Bins again. Little don't argue. Needs a little chipping ball. Kale's going to leave it for his teammate in Will Hayes. Here's Kale again. Little grubber kick up towards the top of the goal square. And Lemmy puts it through for a behind. Carlton's last four scoring shots have all been minus. So they've added the six goals. Six goals to two behinds in this third term. Collingwood have only had a couple of behinds so far. Another turnover in the middle of the ground. Lewis Young tried to go over the top and set something up for Lord. It's a good goal earlier. And Cooper Lord, Di Matea, back to Bytel. Short 45, Monaghan will pick that one off. Blues inside 50 again. Was keen to get it on, moving quickly toward Carl. He was engaged in battle with Schreiber. All picked up by Ma. Hand pass toward the square. Airs there for Collingwood. Dumping kick onto the left boot. Hayes underneath it. Cox came late, did well. Collingwood out of danger. A Quay, Crocker, who held who? Crocker held a Quay. Advantage paid. Nice ball for Monaghan. Two kicks from home here to Blues. They piled on the goals in this third quarter. 
Monaghan, the one-two with the Quay. Just on the outskirts of 50 here. Hayes spinning around, looking for options. Got it out to Ramshaw, finding the space in the pocket. It goes to the square now. Lemmy getting a fist over the top. And cutting across the pack was there. So a whole change for the Pines on the bench here. Two poor players looking to come back on. It's not really in that part of the ground to be able to facilitate it. So we wait for this ball to be thrown in. Shallow throw in. Smith had the front position. Kale's there. He has a flying shot at the goal. Puts it across the face. We'll have it thrown in. So we'll be able to make one change here, Collingwood, I think. Yep, the other three must be sitting there waiting for their opportunity. So we'll wait for this ball to be tossed back in. It's been all the blues in this third quarter. 96 plays 36. Thing got ball game. We want a few more maybe before three good a time, but Bytel will just clear for the pies. Mason Cox might have been held a little bit there by Young. Kick inside 50. Lord trying to work his way through. Got the handball out. O'Keefe. And now Nelson. He kicks the goal. Second goal for Luke Nelson today. And they are now 11 goals in front, the Blues, as we tick down towards three-quarter time here at Icon Park. And well, the Blues, big chance of kicking their highest score for the season. 114 points they scored against the Giants back in round 15. Conversely, the lowest score for Collingwood, 6-12-48. They kicked against the Bull Ants in round seven and Werribee in round eight in back-to-back -back weeks at the moment. 5-6-36 is their tally. Giants was the last team to go down to these VFL Blues. It's still time to buy for Carlton next week. They're not in action in round 18 in Smithies VFL. Next game will be here against Brisbane in round 19. The Lions are third on the VFL table at the moment. Yet another year of strong showings from the Queensland contingent here in the Smithies VFL. Uh, Southport and Gold Coast have been here on grand final day. Brisbane might make that a treble for the Queensland based sides as Hayes goes with the short pass inside 50. And yet again, it's Ned Carl. Again, looking for goal number three in this third quarter. Just remind you again, Peter, the last AFL game between these two was in the year 2000. The final margin that day of the Blues beating Collingwood was 111 points. <laughs> we may be on track for that right now. Lance Whitnell. Trent Hotton was the other ah, thank, you for, thank you for answering that question Kicked too. five goals. He's an ex-Magpie as well. Played for both in the 90s and 2000s. Carl has three. That siren couldn't come quick enough for Collingwood. The Blues have a strong finish to the season. Collingwood, let's see what they can do here to reduce this march. And Adam, take it away. It's the Jackson Bin Show at Icon Park. Three goals and 34 disposals. And he's well ahead of anyone else on the ground. Hayes has 29 for the Blues. Vitale 26 for Collingwood. They get the first entry in the last quarter. But there he is. Disposal number 35 for Jackson Bins. He's brought his own share into Icon today. A game that Collingwood, weirdly enough, is hosting Carlton on. Carlton's spiritual deck. Pit net. Another one. They're racking him up now. His bins towards half forward we go. Lemmy kicks a goal in the first quarter today. Too far out to score from here. Sinks the boot in. 72-point ball game right now. Inside 50. Parker tried to reel it in. Ma got away from him. Kennedy involved, or Wilson rather involved briefly. Before it's wrapped up, a lot of plays over the top of the ball. Last AFL game between these two, Peter, as we've referenced yep. in the year 2000. The final margin that day, 111. We're at 72 right now. So the ball tossed up. Trying to clear it away. Lemmy, Jap getting in there by Tell, just tapping it on to Longmire. 
And now Lane, work through the middle, McRae. Good build up by the Pies. Player all on his own is McDonald. There's no one up ahead. Molvogue sort of streaming down. That's kind of where this kick was intended to go. Nowhere near its target though. And White will be able to clear for the Blues. And sends it out to Bins. And 50 for his trouble. So Jackson Bins. Uh, we've noted that he's probably got the three votes you'd have to say for the listed trophy in this game. He can send Carlton forward again, up towards half forwards. And this kick will go wide in the Jack Martin direction. Just being harassed there by Parker, who did well in the end. Now the Pies looking to clear again. The kick towards the middle of the ground. It's actually into a really good position. McDonald's managed to get that ball over the top. Molvo, his kick. Glover has turned the footy over and it's Ramshaw who's taking the defensive mark for Carlton. The kick was the wrong direction had to go closer to the boundary for Mason Cox there instead he went corridor and that resulted in the turnover Logan Prout with the footy, he's made a meal of it here White was there to try and help out Collingwood do get it back, McRae's going to give it up, a Quay crashing through Christian nearly had him but didn't Blues ball Stevens looking to switch Number 38 for Bins. He's just... What did he start on in the last quarter, Peter? Uh, yeah, 30, 35, four. wasn't it? Well, he's already had four or five already in this quarter. As GF gets the holding the ball call here, Carl knew that he was gone. Chu Giath with the footy for Collingwood. Sun's back out again. That's good to see. Hilary Smith here, Peter's had two goals today. Yes. Finding his feet at the level. Crampton getting involved in this chain of handballs. Parker, kick into the middle of the ground. Trying to get hands to it was Longmire. Now forced to lay the tackle. And this ball will be tossed up. And Skipper Lord gets to his feet. Pitnett, Smith, Lord. Dumped in the tackle there. So just through there and get the handball out. Molvo. Find a player in space. Eventually found one. Now the kick heading up towards 50. McDonald over his head. Goal for the Pies. Yes, Marnie kicks it. It's his second of the day. And, well, gets them their first goal since the second quarter. They've been stranded on five goals from halftime on. Maybe even a bit before that as well. Blues had kicked 10 in a row, Peter. And that's Collingwood's first goal since 25 minute mark of the second. Try and avoid their lowest score of the season. Conversely, Blues looking for their highest score of the season. At the moment sitting at 16 12 108. They've just one more, one goal away from equaling that highest score. The Pies a goal away from equaling their lowest score, Adam. Second goal for Harry Marnie today. We're back in the middle. Pit net. Interesting that Smith didn't really go for that ball. That was a dangerous boot from Hayes. An easy one to pay for Alex Murray. It's going to come back now. What's our player doing? He's you know, calling for a ball up. What's happened? Dangerous boot. For Hayes, that was a free kick paid. Now we've got a ball up. I'm not sure what happens in among all of that. Crocker laying a tackle here. It's been a dirty day for the former Blue, who, while he was at the Blues, was a former Magpie. Now back with the club that he does love dearly, Peter. We heard from Ben Crocker on the State of Play podcast early this year with Joe Pignataro and Gemma Bastiani. He loves his pies that much. He was in the cheer squad for that AFL grand final last year, Peter. <laughs> that was after having just come off a 98-game career at VFL level for the Blues. Inside 50 we go. There's a chance here for Ma, and they instantly get the reply. Carlton neutralising the goal from moments ago. Three goals now for Ma today. And with um, Crocker, sorry, it was 98 goals that he kicked. 
for Carlton in the VFL. Played 45 games from 2021 to 2023. He was quite prolific when he was here as a blue. Well, they respond immediately. Yeah, the State of Play podcast feels every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcast from. Proud subscriber, I'm assuming, Peter. Jim are uh, doing a great job. They're going to be wrapping up the Rebel VFLW Grand Final and looking ahead to the last couple of rounds of the Smithies VFL. They're all out there today. Gemma, as per usual, doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting. The drop of that shower every week is the most important part of my Tuesday routine, Peter. Comes out every Tuesday morning, wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, with uh, Gemma and Joey. I thought there'd been a slight lift in uh, Joey's performance since I've been away, but uh, what, <laughs> what I hear is not the case. So We're doing drive-bys of our colleagues now, are we? Uh, Schmidt <laughs> wow. brought down the tackle by Pitnet. Well, at least it's more than hello and goodbye. At least I think we can count on that. Anyway, working our way through, Prout. There's Hayes. So they're piling in on top here, and the umpire will call a stop to this. Just, just done that. <laughs> We're going after our colleague here. <laughs> hello, Joe. Toss back up. Not we'll be watching. Not a good weekend for your pies, Joe, unfortunately. No. There's the ball tossed out. Prouts, Hayes, and now it's going to be turned over again. So just a little bit of kick to kick going on. So let's just get something rolling here as this ball flying high there was Young. Top hands, McRae trying to get that footy away. They can't. The Blues defending nicely here, but this kick. In the Smith direction, he couldn't take it. He needs to get that handball out. He's being harassed by White, and the umpire will come in and toss it up. So, Blues are going to get their third win of the year. They've got a bye next week in Smithies VFL. It's Brisbane next up. The Lions having a good year. In the VFL, third on the ladder as we speak. Monaghan tackled immediately. And going nowhere. Collingwood hosting Richmond at Punt Road. Who would have thought that in two consecutive weeks they'd be hosting Carlton at the Old Princess Park and then hosting Richmond at, the at Punt Road Oval, which is known as the Swinburne Centre these days, Peter Mercado. The Swinburne Centre, yes, you're right. So... Yeah, it's a bit of a travelling roadshow for the Pies right now. I wonder why can't they use the AIA centre? They did play Geelong there last week. And they will play Brisbane there yeah. in so the final round, round 21. They, why couldn't they be there today or next week? Sure. Interesting. Ball toss back in. Cox. They have a good opportunity for Blues fans before their 440 game AFL game as Ma to Lemmy. He's kick across the ground to Carl. He should just get on his bike here. He won't because Jaff was right there. Handball's inside 50. A little don't argue from Monaghan. Brushes that off. Kicks to the top of the square. They've got the mark. Moore's got it. Looking for goal number two. And right at the top of the goal square. You suspect he won't have any troubles. So, Ashton Moore, goal in quarter number two. As the kick is good. So, he's got his seconds, and the Blues, well, this a big win for them. Their highest score of season 2024. The margin is 78 points. Well, they're, they're looking to, to get that percentage back. They were belted by Geelong at this venue a while ago. And that was up and over 100 points. Just shows how much it can fluctuate at this level. Yeah, round five, 23-18, But they're going to get that percentage back. And... Some, some reasonably high scores. And as I said, they haven't been all that far away from it, but just haven't been able to get the wins on the board, Adam. They'll get one today, number three for the year. 
And as mentioned, even in a couple of recent losses, they've been more than competitive against good teams that will feature in finals, the Bulldogs and the Sharks, as White is taken to ground and pinned for holding the ball. We've got one eye on the Ripple BFLW Grand Final, Peter, but one more Smithies VFL game to come today. That Prana Park, 205 start, standalone matchup, Coburg and Port Melbourne. 41 plays 29, North Melbourne leading 12 into the third there at ETU Stadium, the Rebel VFLW Grand Final. Barra did get better, get the better of Coburg at ETU earlier this year in the Smithies VFL. It was a Friday night game. Out wide. Moore's had quite the second half here for Carlton. Walk down the line. Let me play a fair way up the ground at the moment. Going back to Michael Lewis. So Moore's up to 15 disposals now. Moore's been neutralised in the middle of Icon Park. Crocker. Barely sighted today. Crocker going in board. That's the turnover. Straight to Prout. Logan Prout's been one of the better VFL listed blues today. 16 disposals for him, a Quay. Another AFL listed blue yet to debut. Third year on the list. The Academy product going short. So we're just playing for the final siren potentially now. Both these sides interesting kick into the middle of the ground. It will be recovered by Nelson. Goes out wide. Young will take a bounce immediately, then go towards half forward. Ma. Three goals for him. It's an awkward right football. Mungrel inside 50, but it's okay. And a chance at goal for Cooper Lord. He's going for his second. You mentioned uh, averaging 22 disposals, six tackles in his last month. It's Cooper Lord. One of those ones that really highly regarded young player at the Blues in terms of the way he goes about it. Previously on North Melbourne's VFL list, directly in front here to extend the margin out to a game high, 84. Big right football is straight. Carlton by 84 over the old rival at Icon Park. I still feel there's plenty more goals left to come in this game. 111 was that margin the last time they met at the top level here. So through the midway point of this final term. Good spread of goal kickers too for the Blues. Ten individual goal kickers for the side today. Three players with three goals each. Three players with two goals each. Tony and Smith, the multiple goal kickers for Collingwood today. Yeah, it's a Unfortunate for the Blues. They've got the bye coming up next week. <laughs> Just this one they found some four. Yep. And they can set themselves for Brisbane, but ball back in the middle. Hayes. Handball over the top. Ma. Handball inside 50. Nelson. Ball will eventually spill free bins. Ah, oh, good delivery. Moore will take it again. So Ashton Moore. Chance here at another one on the board for him. Talk about multiple goal kickers. He's certainly on that list. He's got two. Chance at number three. His kick's not going to make the trip. Off hands, it's going to dribble through for a behind. Margin 85 points now here at Icon Park. A big win coming up for the Blues. Second round pick last year, Ashton Moore yet to debut. 17 disposals and oh. two goals, two for today. Collingwood making another mistake inside defensive 50. Can Carlson capitalise? It's going to be a ball up. Ball was with Moore. As the umpire called for the stoppage. Murkov in ruck against Cox. Hayes, right football. It was a tumble punt, though, and it bounces out of bounds on the full. So Carlton are going to score their second win 
in their last three. Frampton has it last line of defence for Collingwood. Kick was a little hot coming in for Parker, but he did make it stick. He wanted to go wide quickly. Ramshaw was making life hard for Sparks there. Here's another chance for Ashton Moore. Having a great second half. Pick 29 in last year's draft. He wants to give it off. Not feeling confident from this range. He has got a teammate just over his right shoulder. I think that's Ramshaw. <laughs> now Alex Burkov's calling for it. Deep inside. He's all on his own. Moore. That's a mongrel as well. White went for the mark. Didn't take it. Frampton's got him. Stoppage in the square. Jackson Bins now up to 42 disposals. Peter Mercado, 12 Ooh. of them have been contested. It's kicked three goals, 12 marks. What a day he's had as the ball is thrown up. Umpire saw a hold. Free kick for Carlton. With the margin to extend out again, I think it's going to be Lemmy's ball. It's in the hands of Murkov, though. It will be Alex Murkov to take the shot. Going for his second goal. Margin will be 91 points momentarily, you would think. Three goals for the year, going for his second today, Alex Murkov. Carlton by 91. It's a thrashing of the Magpies at Icon today. Sure is. Well, they've kicked the Pies one goal, two since half time. And Carlton have piled on the goals, 11 goals. Goal seven. He is uh, mauling now. And it's just a matter of by how much. So 91 points. I'm sure Lee Power might have said, run it out, boys. Let's get a win over the arch rival. Let's get a decent win over the arch rival too. So 91 points is the margin. Tough season continuing for Collingwood slump to 2 and 13 on the season. The Blues will go to 3 and 12. Two wins in the last couple of rounds. And we'll do this all again. Murkov and the big Roo. Swift getting the tap down. Working his way through with Longmire. And he'll Send the pies inside 50. McDonald comes out to meet the footy. Can't complete the mark. Ball off hands. Trying to push through is Kennedy. He'll have the shot at goal and miss. Just six goals today for Colling. So margin back to 90. Heading towards time on in this final quarter. One kick out from Lewis. Oh, getting to centre wing, Smith. Here's Christian on debut, the son of Michael. Sent the handball out wide. That should be a high contact free kick. It will be paid to Marnie. Two goals today for Harry Marnie. First one in the second quarter. It's actually one of the highlights of the day. One of the few for Collingwood. It was a Smithy snag. The lovers going nowhere here. It's going to be a tough challenge for Collingwood against Richmond next week. There will not be many AFL listed players for either side at the Swinburne Centre for that one. Both these teams out of finals contention now in Smithy's VFL. Off balance kick around the corner from Christian. It'll bounce along near the boundary line and stay in play for Ramshaw. It's been good as a rebounding defender today. Blues. Working the boundary line here. It's going to be turned over to Sparks, but he was pressured immediately. Hand pass toward the wing. Just not much happening of any quality in there right now. Smith taking it in the middle of the ground. He's got, actually, he's got a good left foot. Zillaru Smith. That was a nice ball for Marnie. Oh. Kennedy selling the candy, then giving out the handball. Bytel going further wide. Marnie brought down by White. No whistles there. Lewis again. Snapping the ball back out of D50. Murkoff takes the mark after taking some contact. Now, Kyle's the player who's right near the interchange benches. Decided to ignore that. He's going to go short. Crouts. We go even shorter here. 
Tries to go over the top. And it's gone too far. Frampton. Rose. Schreiber there. Now by Tell. Kick inside 50. It's going to be all blues at the fall of the ball again. And it's White. Going to reset. The switch is on. Young. And they're just racking up the possessions. Hayes. Ta-da. Bins. Stevens. On this outer side, Moore. Back to Hayes. Short kick. Nelson. And it slipped over at the crucial moment. Turnover is on. Longmire. Putting up some nice touches in this final quarter. And the umpire will come in and toss the ball up. So we wait for this ball. Work his way through is Kennedy. Pans eventually it spills free. Now McRae. Kick inside 50 is good. They've got a mark. It's Molvogue who's got it. Kicked a goal in the second quarter. Chance to add another one to the tally here. So winding down this game going to be a big win for Carlton on their home deck. Chad Mulvogue. Chance to join the multiple goal kicker list. Only kicked the one goal this season. Coming into today. And now he's got two to add to the tally. Out of his day's work here. Tough day for the Pies. The margin back to 84 points. Three-quarter time in the VFL Rebel VFLW Grand Final. Scores level, 6-6-42 apiece. There's been a comeback there, hasn't there? Yeah, four goals to none in that third quarter in favour of Footscray. So, barnstorming finish to come. Up next in the Smithies VFL, the final game of round 17. You can watch it on afl.com.au and the AFL Live official out, Todd Morris and Dan Winkle. Will be on the coverage for that one at Parada Park, final game of the round. A much better day than what we had yesterday, weather-wise. It was bad, Peter. It was just bad. There were like, there were country games called off for fears of hypothermia. That is no joke. That was a headline in the News Corp papers that covered a local footy over the last 24 hours. I think it was the Central Highlands League. There might have been a game in the Ballarat League, Peter, that was called off. It was a tough old day yesterday. Proper winter in the middle of July. But the sun's been out for the majority of the day here. And it's been shining on Jackson Bins. Three goals straight, 44 disposals, 12 of those contested, 13 marks, 8 intercepts, 3 inside 50s. What a day for Jackson Bins. Hayes hasn't been too bad either. This is disposal number 34. Twelve of those have been contested. Nine clearances for Hayes. So he's going to maintain his average. His average 34 in his previous couple of games. He's going to maintain that mark today. What a great addition. He's been off late. May not be a coincidence that Carlton's form has just seen a bit of an uptick of late in the VFL. With some quality oh. players now playing some quality footy, holding the ball free kick and wanting to extract it is Cooper McDonald. It's been a little flurry late from Collingwood, some late goals in this game. Crocker and Cox are both down here, and runs away and goes out of bounds. So, four goals one for Carlton in this quarter, two goals one for Collingwood. Wait for this footy to be thrown back in. Another prolific game. We haven't mentioned Xavier Marr today, Peter. Also three goals, 34 disposals for him, nine inside 50s. Yeah, there's a lot for Luke Power and also Michael Voss to, to pour over in terms of players, with the, the VFL listed players anyway, staking their claim. Free kick here to Collingwood. And it will be Harry Marnie. Chance to kick his third of the day. 
Yes, of the AFL listed Blues after Ben's next best on the stat sheet is Cooper Law 23 and a couple of goals today. Yeah, happy with Brody Kemp's game though, one of the emergencies for the AFL game. Mark Pitnett's been all right. Here comes Harry and he has missed. 12 marks, eight of those intercepts today for Kemp. So the margin now 83 points here at Icon Park. They're not going to crack the ton in terms of the margin here and the Pies have avoided their lowest total of the year. Kemp's influence on this game was when it was still arguably in the balance. He had a great first half today. Long kick down the line. Perhaps big fist to kill off that ball. And it does stay in play. That's a great little nifty pass by Longmire. Haven't called his name today. Jed Longmire. Glover to line up. That was a hell of a kick. Couldn't be any more pinpoint. There yeah, was a leak. Sam Glover looking to bring the margin back down again. Biggest it was was 91 points after Murkov kicked that goal from the goal square at the 17 minute, 17 minute mark of this last quarter. Glover didn't, just didn't look right off the boot, did it? Went across the face for no score. So I'll wait for this footy to be thrown back over the fence. For Collingwood, Peter, Jack Bytel has had 31 disposals today. Not much else to write home, about 20 for McRae. Lewis Young. It's clear for the Blues. All right near the line, hasn't been taken over. So chance for the Pies. Schreiber. Kick might be cut off by Murkov. Going one-on-one -on -one with Sparks. Ball falls to the back. Kennedy just dropped in the tackle. Trailing umpire says that was high. Had the better view. Let's see what he can do here. Kennedy will kick inside 50. Cox has to go from three back. He can't get there. Ma across here to Stevens. Quail get on the end of this footy. Can reset. A little bit of congestion up ahead, so he just needs to go by a short kick. No. 23rd player today for Carlson. Ramshaw. Just going to possess the footy for a while. As Hayes that was waiting for him. That's Longmire. Good effort. Right in the dying stages of this one. The result already known. That'll please Josh Fraser on a day that's been pretty tough for the Pies. Margin 83 points. 29 minutes down. Should be too much longer yet. Left the. I noticed that the signboard's not being presented at the benches. Ma will kick over the top. That'll be wide because the match is done. Big win here for Carlton here at Icon Park against the arch rival. 20 goals, 13, 133 to 7 goals, 850. An 83 point victory after the Blues led by 18 at quarter time, 19 at half time, 72 at three quarter time, and 83 at full time. Three goals.